Hello guys, welcome back to Back to Future Episode 1 It's About Time Part 3 Yep, well, Part 3 already guys So let's continue uh, I think uh, well, you, we need to go to the uh, police station So uh, first of all, let's just uh, Let's just look at this first I guess this is where the speakeasy burned Ooh. down How would Doc ever get mixed up in that? I think I know exactly how It's like the police station like this way I, so, oh my god, I really, this is the scene for the movie, you know the first movie where you go down here, and the, uh... Where is the jail and I... Oh, here we go! My! <laughs> Mark. Oh my god, Doc! Oh my god! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? Oh, the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten huh. about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so okay. wonderful to see you. Oh, hey, you got it. Oh, yes, it did. Yeah, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Hey, Scott, I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan. A plan? Right. But what? Um. Uh... Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, okay. the events that okay. you now that would be a good plan. Resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. <laughs> he's right, he's right. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. He's right. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be. <gasps> and you heard some like rain shots in the background. My rocket powered drill. What the flip? A rocket powered drill? No. Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17 year old son oh my. a patent application for a rocket powered drill. Okay. Don't ignore the rain shots in the background. It's kind of raining where oh, I am. But I'm just going to keep quiet. Great. Ooh. I'll just run back to your lab. No, no, I said nearly complete. Need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half finished rocket powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. Wait. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. Okay. Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Good. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Yeah. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. Hey, that's part. Uh, that's the uh, Jennifer. That's Parker. Parker Jennifer. Jennifer. Uh, sorry, not Jennifer. I guess I better get started. That's uh, Danny, worry, Parker. Danny, Danny Parker. Danny Parker. I'm gonna be there. Danny Parker. Once you and my younger self put your heads Ooh. together, you'll be unstoppable. Right. Go and find your younger self. Oh yeah, we also have ourselves, we still have a picture of Bob, oh, our father. Here's the soup kitchen. 
Not a bad place. Okay, let's go to the super now. Okay. I love this game. I remember this game back in the day. Well, well, back a couple of years ago. The cutscenes are kind of good in this game. Don't use it off. It was just loading, guys. Who is that? Who is that? Make fly. Biff? Kid. Grandpa? Yeah, your That's grandpa. Mr. Cannon to you. Oh! What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some oh, oh, soup. Oh, oh, oh. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. I'm gonna get drink. Think, Nick Fly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like baby. Oh. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas oh, this is the hands of my I'm... number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. Oh. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? I love this uh, game. <laughs> no, so... of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just... Run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly. Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! Hey! You don't be mean to buy the five grand car until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Right, let's ring the telephone! Also, I don't talk to this guy. Let's go ring the telephone! <laughs> oh, this is so good. I love this game. Am I making the 25 minutes long? Brown uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Mm, yeah, I see his calling. The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. No, but his father did. Doc's father did. I remembered because he did. I remember now. Doc's father worked at the courthouse. Yeah, but his father did work there. No, Dr. Emmett Brown's father did. So the courthouse is like, if we go this way, and we walk through the park, this is just an example, we walk through the park, yeah we walk through the park, I think this is like, a way, oh, <laughs> the game, the, you, place, you can press the space bar to pause the game, now that would be a good pause, I like that pause, look. Game is paused. <laughs> I like that already. Okay, good. I'm going to. The court. The no docks in the courthouse. I hope I'll be able to recognize him. Let's go knock on the door. Don't touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is. Oh! <laughs> sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. I have important business as well, mate. Naturally, H2A multiplied by the inversion of H has become out less than expected value of A, right? What am I missing here? Or do we take H as half a community of line up? H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's see. Four cases of math, time acceleration, plus fast snoop. But how many meetings are required to maintain a constant? Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Indeed, relative to the speed of light. So, oh, wait, let's back to H. Right, 
Uh, he's going in the... Hello? No solicitors! <laughs> Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. Okay. I'm not big on friends. Oh, oh my God. Work. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. But the inverse of A might... Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay. Stop! You don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the... am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. H stands for one. Come on! Oh, give me a chance. Yeah, give him a chance. Hi, Mr. Corleone. <laughs> Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! <laughs> oh my God! This is terrible. Once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character. I don't need to go in there anymore. Right, not that time. H stands for one, for one dimensional harm. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law... <laughs> I don't want to do this game. The legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. And uh, about don't your... Don't say it. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. Oh, God. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Oh, this not work out. Of justice turning. This is not work out well. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned just. Wrong. Eight. Look at that. Now <laughs> <he's laughs> <seen. laughs> part three. Are people with a dark secret to hide, and I don't have a dark secret to hide. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bones connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. What's this important business you're up to? Yeah! It's a legal matter. Very complicated, oh. very obtrusive. Oh. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party in the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Emmett, uh, about Don't your... Don't say it. Rock on it, he said. Let's go back to Doc and ask him that we uh, couldn't get your younger self to. Right, we couldn't do anything. We need to go back to Doc and tell him that we failed. Wrong way. Okay, this is the right way now.
Okay, let's continue. Let's hope dog that we have a problem. Dag, Morty, have you found my younger self yet? Well, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, <laughs> I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. What do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! Expo? Yes, the Expo. How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me... Oh, 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 but it was a spectacularly oh, 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 I love this. <laughs> one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist to a professional you. seeker of truth. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. Okay, now we know more information about your younger self. Yeah, exactly. Okay, our PlayStation is really old. Yeah, we are going to fix himself. We're going to go to him now. We're going to talk to him. We're going to fix the guy. Alright, let's go and fix your... Let's go and fix your... Yo, his youngest... You just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorrupt, judge that Hill Valley <laughs> has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about your... say it. Right, so that's all about plan. Let's go talk to Einstein. Hey, how you doing, Einy? Okay, let's go to the hairdressers. Let's go to our hairdressers. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna end it. Uh, I'm gonna end it when I get to the hairdressers. I'm gonna end it when I get to the hairdressers. So I'm gonna the hairdressers. So the controls are actually kind of. I mean, it's all game too far. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? I'll never be able to remember what young Doc's mumbling about.
I could use that. I'll wait till he comes here. Is that even possible? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. The speed relative to the speed of light. Now still talk about what he was rumbling. And then we'll end up for that. <laughs> and then we'll end it there because I'm not it makes a good ending. So Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think ever think. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion. Exactly. By the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional memory. So it'll be fine. Right, we're gonna give him the answer, and then we're gonna end the episode because there's no point in any episode. Oh yeah, halfway through. Let's give him the answer. Just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott. If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week. <laughs> I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. Ah! I guess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the uh, paperwork back. Okay, okay, okay. okay that's... Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? I need one. Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. Whoa. Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done. I mean, it might be a full-size model. But I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. 
What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Unfortunately, we're going to have to end the episode here. Thank you so much for watching the episode. Thank you so much for watching the episode. Give a like, thumbs up. Click here to, uh, click here to subscribe to my channel. Click here to see my latest video. Click here to see the rest of the videos in my playlist. And goodbye.